Dedication, Prelude, Prologue, and Scene 1 of Faust. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Faust, Part 1, by Johann Wolfgang von Goethe. Translated by Bayard Taylor. Dedication. Again ye come, ye hovering forms. I find ye as early to my clouded sight ye shone. Shall I attempt this once to seize and bind ye? Still, O oh, my heart, is that illusion thrown? Ye crowd more near. Then be the rain assigned ye, and sway me from your misty shadowy zone. My bosom thrills with youthful passion shaken, for a magic airs that round your march awaken. Of joyous days ye bring the blissful vision, the dear familiar phantoms rise again, and, like an old and half-extinct tradition, first love returns with friendship in his train. Renewed is pain, with mournful repetition, life tracks his devious labyrinthine chain, and names the good whose cheating fortune tore them from happy hours, and left me to deplore them. They hear no longer these succeeding measures, the souls to whom my earliest songs I sang, Dispersed the friendly troop with all its pleasures, And still, alas, the echoes first that rang. I bring the unknown multitude my treasures, Their very plaudits give my heart a pang. And those beside, whose joy my song is flattered, If still they live, wide through the world are scattered. And grasps me now a long, unwanted yearning For that serene and solemn spirit-land, My song to faint Aeolian murmurs turning, Sways like a harp-string by the breezes fanned. I thrill and tremble, tear on tear is burning, And the stern heart is tenderly unmanned. What I possess I see far distant lying, And what I lost grows real and undying. Prelude at the Theatre You two, who oft a helping hand have lent, In need and tribulation, come, let me know your expectation of this our enterprise in German land. I wish the crowd to feel itself well treated, especially since it lives and lets me live. The posts are set, the booth of boards completed, and each awaits the banquet I shall give. Already there, with curious eyebrows raised, they sit sedate, and hope to be amazed. I know how one the people's taste may flatter yet here a huge embarrassment i feel what they're accustomed to is no great matter but then alas they've read an awful deal how shall we plan that all be fresh and new important matter yet attractive too for tis my pleasure to behold them surging when to our booth the current sets apace and with Tremendous oft-repeated urging squeeze onward through the narrow gate of grace. By daylight, even, they push and cram in to reach the cellar's box, a fighting host, and, as for bread around a baker's door in famine, to get a ticket break their necks almost. This miracle alone can work the poet on men so various. Now, my friend, pray show it. Speak not to me of yonder motley masses, Whom but to see puts out the fire of song. Hide from my view the surging crowd that passes, And in its whirlpool forces us along. No, lead me where some heavenly silence glasses, The purer joys that round the poet throng, Where love and friendship still divinely fashion The bonds that bless, the wreaths that crown his passion. Ah, every utterance from the depths of feeling The timid lips have stammeringly expressed, Now failing, now perchance success revealing, Gulps the wild moment in its greedy breast. Or oft reluctant years its warrant sealing, Its perfect stature stands at last confessed. What dazzles for the moment spends its spirit, What's genuine shall posterity inherit. Posterity? Don't name the word to me. If I should choose to preach posterity, where would you get contemporary fun? That men will have it, there's no blinking. A fine young fellow's presence, to my thinking, is something worth to every one, who genially his nature cannot for takes from the people's moods no irritation. The wider circle he acquires, the more securely works his inspiration. 
then pluck apart and give us sterling coin let fancy be with her attendants fitted sense reason sentiment and passion join but have a care lest folly be omitted chiefly enough of incident prepare they come to look and they prefer to stare reel off a host of threads before their faces so that they gape in stupid wonder then by sheer diffuseness you have won their graces and are at once most popular of men only by mass you touch the mass for any will finally himself his bit select who offers much brings something unto many and each goes home content with the effect if you've a piece why just in pieces give it a hash a stew will bring success believe it tis easily displayed and easy to invent what use a whole compactly to present your hearers pick and pluck as soon as they receive it you do not feel how such a trade debases how ill it suits the artist proud and true the botching work each fine pretender traces is i perceive a principle with you such a reproof not in the least offends a man who some result intends must use the tools that best are fitting reflect soft wood is given to you for splitting and then observe for whom you write if one comes bored exhausted quite another satiate leaves the banquet's tapers and worst of all full many a wight is fresh from reading of the daily papers idly to us they come as to a masquerade mere curiosity their spirits warming the ladies with themselves and with their finery aid without a salary their parts performing what dreams are yours in high poetic places you're pleased forsooth full houses to behold draw near and view your patrons faces the half are coarse the half are cold one when the play is out goes home to cards a wild knight on a wench's breast another chooses why should you rack poor foolish bards for ends like these the gracious muses i tell you give but more more ever more they ask thus shall you hit the mark of gain and glory seek to confound your auditory to satisfy them is a task what ails you now is it suffering or pleasure go find yourself a more obedient slave what shall the poet that which nature gave the highest right supreme humanity forfeit so wantonly to swell your treasure whence o'er the heart his empire free the elements of life how conquers he is not his heart's accord urged outward far and dim to wind the world in unison with him when on the spindle spun to endless distance by nature's listless hand the thread is twirled and the discordant tones of all existence in sullen jangle are together hurled who then the changeless order of creation divides and kindles into rhythmic dance who brings the one to join the general ordination where it may throb in grandest consonance who bids the storm to passion stir the bosom in brooding souls the sunset burn above who scatters every fairest april blossom along the shining path of love who braids the noteless leaves to crowns requiting desert with fame in actions every field who makes olympus sure the gods uniting the might of man as in the bard revealed so these fine forces in conjunction propel the high poetic function as in a love adventure they might play you meet by accident you feel you stay and by degrees your heart is tangled bliss grows apace and then its course is jangled you're ravished quite then comes a touch of woe and there's a neat romance completed ere you know let us then such a drama give grasp the exhaustless life that all men live each shares therein though few may comprehend where'er you touch there's interest without end in motley pictures little light much error and of truth a glimmering might thus the best beverage is supplied whence all the world is cheered and edified 
then at your play behold the fairest flower of youth collect to hear the revelation each tender soul with sentimental power sucks melancholy food from your creation and now in this now that the leaven works and each beholds what in his bosom lurks they still are moved at once to weeping or to laughter still wonder at your flights enjoy the show they see a mind once formed is never suited after one yet in growth will ever grateful be then give me back that time of pleasures while yet in joyous growth i sang when like a fount the crowding measures uninterrupted gushed and sprang then bright mist veiled the world before me in opening buds a marvel woke as i the thousand blossoms broke which every valley richly bore me i nothing had and yet enough for youth joy in illusion ardent thirst for truth give unrestrained the old emotion the bliss that touched the verge of pain the strength of hate love's deep devotion oh give me back my youth again youth good my friend you certainly require when foes in combat sorely press you when lovely maids in fond desire hang on your bosom and caress you when from the hard-worn gold wreath beckons afar the race awaiting when after dancing out your breath you pass the night in dissipating but the familiar harp with soul to play with grace and bold expression and towards a self-erected goal to walk with many a sweet digression this aged sirs belongs to you and we no less revere you for that reason age childish makes they say but tis not true we're only genuine children still in age's season the words you've bandied are sufficient tis deeds that i prefer to see in compliments you're both proficient but might the while more useful be what's need to talk of inspiration tis no companion of delay if poetry be your vocation let poetry your will obey full well you know what here is wanting the crowd for strongest drink is panting and such forthwith i'd have you brew what's left undone to-day to-morrow will not do waste not a day in vain digression with resolute courageous trust seize every possible impression and make it firmly your possession you'll then work on because you must upon our german stage you know it each tries his hand at what he will so take of traps and scenes your fill and all you find be sure to show it use both the great and lesser heavenly light squander the stars in any number beasts birds trees rocks and all such lumber fire water darkness day and night thus in our booth's contracted sphere the circle of creation will appear and move as we deliberately impel from heaven across the world to hell prologue in heaven the three archangels come forward the sun orb sings in emulation mid brother spheres his ancient round his path predestined through creation he ends with step of thunder sound the angels from his vigid splendid draw power whose measure none can say the lofty works uncomprehended are bright as on the earliest day and swift and swift beyond conceiving the splendor of the world goes round day's eden brightness still relieving the awful night's intense profound the ocean tides in foam are breaking against the rocks deep bases hurled and both the spheric race partaking eternal swift are onward whirled and rival storms abroad are surging from sea to land from land to sea a chain of deepest action forging round all in wrathful energy there flames a desolation blazing before the thunder's crashing way yet lord thy messengers are praising the gentle movement of thy day though still by them uncomprehended from these the angels draw their power and all thy works sublime and splendid are bright as in creation's hour since thou o lord deign'st to approach again 
and ask us how we do in manner kindest, and heretofore to meet myself wet fain among thy menials now my face thou findest. Pardon, this troop I cannot follow after, with lofty speech, though by them scorned and spurned, my pathos certainly would move thy laughter, if thou hadst not all merriment unlearned. Of suns and walls I have nothing to be quoted, how man torment themselves is all I have noted. The little god of the wall sticks to the same old way, and is as whimsical as on creation's day. Life somewhat better might content him, but for the gleam of heavenly light which thou hast lent him. He calls it reason, thence his power is increased, to be far beastlier than any beast. Saving thy gracious presence, he to me, a long-legged grasshopper, appears to be, that springing flies and flying springs, and in the grass the same old ditty sings. Would he still lay among the grass he grows in, each bit of dung he seeks to stick his nose in. Hast thou then nothing more to mention? Comest ever thus with ill intention? Find'st nothing right on earth eternally? No, Lord, I find things there still bad as they can be. Man's misery even to pity moves my nature. I have scars the heart to plague the wretched creature. Knowst Faust? The doctor Faust. My servant, he. Forsooth, he serves you after strange devices, no earthly meat or drink the full suffices. His spirit is form and fire spirit, half conscious of his frenzied crazed unrest. The fairest stars from heaven he required, from art the highest raptures and the best, and all the near and far that he desired fails to subdue the tumult of his breast. Though still confused his service unto me, I soon shall lead him to a clearer morning. Sees not the gardener, even while buds his tree, both flower and fruit the future years adorning? What will you bet? There is still a chance to gain him, if unto me full leave you give, gently upon my road to train him. As long as he on earth shall live, so long I make no prohibition. While man's desires and aspirations stir, he cannot choose but err. My thanks. I find the dead no acquisition, and never care to have them in my keeping. I much prefer the chicks where ruddy blood is leaping and when a corpse approaches close my house, it goes with me as with the cap, the mouse. Enough! What thou hast asked is granted. Turn off this spirit from his fountainhead. To trap him let thy snares be planted, and him with thee be downward led. Then stand abashed when thou art forced to say, a good man through obscurest aspiration has still an instinct of the one true way agreed but it is a short probation about my bet i feel no trepidation if i fulfil my expectation he will let me triumph with a swelling breast dust shall he eat and with a chest as did a certain snake my near relation Therein thou art free according to thy merits. The like of thee have never moved my hate. Of all the bold denying spirits, the waggish knave least trouble doth create. Man's active nature flagging seats too soon the level. Unqualified repose he learns to crave. Whence willingly the comrade him I gave who works excites and must create as devil but ye gods sons in love and duty enjoy the rich the everlasting beauty creative power
power that works eternal schemes clasp you in bonds of love relaxing never and what in wavering apparition gleams fix in its place with thoughts that stand for ever heaven closes the archangels separate solus i like at times to hear the ancient's word and have a care to be most civil it is really kind of such a noble lord so humanly to gossip with the devil first part of the tragedy one night a lofty arched narrow gothic chamber faust in a chair at his desk restless i have studied now philosophy and jurisprudence medicine and even alas theology from end to end with labour keen and here poor fool with all my lore i stand no wiser than before i am magister yea doctor hight and straight or crosswise wrong or right these ten years long with many woes i've led my scholars by the nose and see that nothing can be known that knowledge cuts me to the bone i'm cleverer true than those fops of teachers doctors and magisters scribes and preachers neither scruples nor doubts come now to smite me nor hell nor devil can longer affright me for this all pleasure am i foregoing i do not pretend to aught worth knowing i do not pretend i could be a teacher to help or convert a fellow-creature then too i've neither lands nor gold nor the world's least pomp or honour hold no dog would endure such a cursed existence wherefore from magic i seek assistance that many a secret perchance i reach through spirit power and spirit speech and thus the bitter task forego of saying things i do not know that i may detect the inmost force which binds the world and guides its course its germs productive powers explore and rummage in empty words no more o oh, full and splendid moon whom i have from this desk seen climb the sky so many a midnight would thy glow for the last time beheld my woe ever thine eye most mournful friend o'er books and papers saw me bend but would that i on mountains grand amid thy blessed light could stand with spirits through mountain caverns hover float in thy twilight the meadows over and freed from the fumes of lore that swathe me to health in thy dewy fountains bathe me ah me this dungeon still i see this drear accursed masonry where even the welcome daylight strains but duskly through the painted panes hemmed in by many a toppling heap of books worm-eaten grey with dust which to the vaulted ceiling creep against the smoky paper thrust with glasses boxes round me stacked and instruments together hurled ancestral lumber stuffed and packed such is my world and what a world and do i ask wherefore my heart falters oppressed with unknown needs why some inexplicable smart all movement of my life impedes alas in living nature's stead where god his human creature set in smoke and mould the fleshless dead and bones of beasts surround me yet fly up and seek the broad free land and this one book of mystery from nostradamus's very hand is it not sufficient company when i the starry courses know and nature's wise instruction seek with light of power my soul shall glow as when to spirits spirits speak tis vain this empty brooding here though guessed the holy symbols be you spirits come you hover near oh if you hear me answer me he opens the book and perceives the sign of the macrocosm ha huh, what a sudden rapture leaps from this i view through all my senses swiftly flowing 
I feel a youthful, holy, vital bliss in every vein and fibre newly glowing. Was it a god who traced this sign with calm across my tumult stealing, my troubled heart to joy unsealing with impulse mystic and divine, the powers of nature here around my path revealing? Am I a god? So clear mine eyes, in these pure features I behold creative nature to my soul unfold. What says the sage? Now first I recognize the spirit world no closures fasten thy senses shut thy heart is dead disciple up untiring hasten to bathe thy breast in morning red he contemplates the sign how each the whole its substance gives each in the other works and lives like heavenly forces rising and descending, their golden urns reciprocally lending, with wings that winnow blessing, from heaven through earth I see them pressing, filling the all with harmony unceasing. How grand a show! But ah, a show alone! Thee, boundless nature, how make thee my own? Where you, you beast, founts of all being shining, Whereon hang heaven's and earth's desire? Where to our withered hearts aspire? You flow, you feed, and am I vainly pining? He turns the leaves impatiently, and perceives the sign of the earth spirit. How otherwise upon me works this sign? Thou, spirit of the earth, art nearer. Even now my powers are loftier, clearer. I glow as drunk with new-made wine. New strength and heart to meet the world incite me. The woe of earth, the bliss of earth invite me. And though the shock of storms may smite me, no crash of shipwreck shall have power to fright me. Clouds gather over me. The moon conceals her light. The lamps extinguished. Mists rise. Red, angry rays are darting around my head. There falls a horror from the vaulted roof, and seizes me. I feel thy presence. Spirit, I invoke. Reveal thyself. Ha! In my heart what rending stroke! With new impulsion my senses heave in this convulsion. I feel thee draw my heart, absorb, exhaust me. Thou must, thou must, and though my life it cost me, he seizes the book and mysteriously pronounces the sign of the spirit. A ruddy flame flashes. The spirit appears in the flame. Who calls me? With averted head. Terrible to see! Me hast thou long with might attracted, Long from my sphere thy food extracted, And now... Woe! I endure not thee! To view me is thine aspiration, my voice to hear, my countenance to see. Thy powerful yearning moveth me, here am I. What mean perturbation thee superhuman shakes? Thy soul's high calling where? Where is the breast from which itself a world did bear, and shaped and cherished? with such joy expanded, to be our peer with us, the spirits banded. Where art thou, Faust, whose voice has pierced to me, who towards me pressed with all thine energy? He art thou, who, my presence breathing, seeing, trembles through all the depths of being, a writhing worm, a terror-stricken form? The form of flame shall I then fear? Yes, I am Faust, I am thy peer. In the tides of life, in action's storm, A fluctuant wave, a shuttle free, Birth and the grave, an eternal sea, A weaving, flowing life, all glowing, Thus at time's humming loom, tis my hand prepares the garment of life which the deity wears. Thou, who around the wide world wendest, 
thou busy spirit how near i feel to thee thou art like the spirit which thou comprehendest not me disappears overwhelmed not thee whom then i image of the godhead not even like thee a knock o oh, death i know it tis my famulus my fairest luck finds no fruition in all the fullness of my vision the soulless sneak disturbs me thus enter wagner in dressing-gown and nightcap a lamp in his hand faust turns impatiently Arden. I heard your declamation. Twas sure an old Greek tragedy you read. In such an art I crave some preparation, since now it stands one in good stead. I've often heard it said a preacher might learn with a comedian for a teacher. Yes, when the priest comedian is by nature, as happily now and then the case may be. Ah, when one studies thus a prison creature that scarce the world on holidays can see scarce through a glass by rare occasion how shall one lead it by persuasion you'll ne'er attain it save you know the feeling save from the soul it rises clear serene in primal strength compelling the hearts and minds of all who hear you sit forever gluing patching you cook the scraps from others fair and from your heap of ashes hatching a starveling flame you blow it bare take children's monkeys gaze admiring if such your taste and be content but ne'er from heart to heart you'll speak inspiring save your own heart is eloquent yet through delivery or to succeed i feel that i am far behind indeed seek thou the honest recompense beware a tinkling fool to be with little art clear wit and sense suggest their own delivery and if thou art moved to speak in earnest what need that after words thou yearnest yes your discourses with their glittering show where you for men twist shredded thought like paper are unrefreshing as the winds that blow the rustling leaves through chill autumnal vapour oh god but art is long and life alas is fleeting and oft with zeal my critic duties meeting in head and breast there's something wrong how hard it is to compass the assistance whereby one rises to the source and haply ere one travels half the course must the poor devil quit existence is parchment then the holy font before thee a draught wherefrom thy thirst for ever slakes no true refreshment can restore thee save what from thine own soul spontaneous breaks pardon a great delight is granted when in the spirit of the ages planted we mark how ere our times a sage has thought and then how far his work and grandly we have brought oh yes up to the stars at last listen my friend the ages that are past are now a book with seven seals protected what you the spirit of the ages call is nothing but the spirit of you all wherein the ages are reflected so oftentimes you miserably mar it at the first glance who sees it runs away an awful barrel and a lumber garret or at the best a punch and judy play with maxims most pragmatical and hitting as in the mouths of puppets are befitting but then the world the human heart and brain of these one covets some slight apprehension yes of the kind which men attain who dares the child's true name in public mention the few who thereof something really learned unwisely frank with hearts that spurned concealing and to the mob laid bare each thought and feeling have evermore been crucified and burned i pray you friend tis now the dead of night our converse here must be suspended i would have showed your watches with the light so that our learned talk might be extended to-morrow though i'll ask in easter leisure this and the other question at your pleasure most zealously i seek for erudition 
Much do I know, but to know is all my ambition. Exit. Solus. That brain alone not loses hope, whose choice is to stick in shallow trash forevermore, which digs with eager hand for buried ore, and when it finds an angle worm, rejoices. Dare such a human voice disturb the flow around me here of spirit present fullest? And yet, this once my thanks I owe to thee, of all earth's sons the poorest, dullest. For thou hast torn me from that desperate state which threatens soon to overwhelm my senses. The apparition was so giant great, it dwarfed and withered all my soul's pretenses. I, image of the Godhead, who began deeming eternal truth secure in nearness, ye choirs, have ye begun the sweet, consoling chant, which through the night of death the angels' ministrants sang, God's new covenant repeating? With spices and precious balm we arrayed him, faithful and gracious we tenderly laid him, linen to bind him, cleanly wound we, Ah, when we would find him, Christ no more found we. Christ is ascended, bliss hath invested him, woes that molested him, trials that tested him, gloriously ended. Why, here in dust, entice me with your spell, you gentle, powerful sounds of heaven? Peel rather there, where tender natures dwell. Your messages I hear, but faith has not been given. The dearest child of faith is miracle. I venture not to soar to yonder regions whence the glad tidings hither float. And yet from childhood up, familiar with the note, to life it now renews my old allegiance. Once heavenly love sent down a burning kiss upon my brow, in Sabbath silence holy, and filled with mystic presage chimed the church bell slowly and prayer dissolved me in a fervent bliss. A sweet, uncomprehended yearning drove forth my feet through woods and meadows free, and while a thousand tears were burning, I felt a world arise for me. These chants, to youth and all its sports appealing, proclaimed the spring's rejoicing holiday, and memory holds me now, with childish feeling, back from the last, the solemn way. Sound on, ye hymns of heaven, so sweet and mild. My tears gush forth, the earth takes back her child. Has he, victoriously, burst from the vaulted grave and all gloriously, now sits exalted? Is he, in low of birth, rapture created near? Ah, to, to the world of earth, still are we made to hear. We, his aspiring followers, him we miss, weeping, desiring, Master, thy bliss. Christ is risen, risen out of corruption's womb. Burst ye the prison, break from your gloom, praising and pleading him, lovingly needing him, brotherly feeding him, preaching and speeding him, blessing succeeding him, thus is the master near, thus is he here. End of section. Three of Faust. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Faust, Part One, by Johann Wolfgang von Goethe, translated by Bayard Taylor. Two. Before the city gate, pedestrians of all kinds come forth. Why do you go that way? way? Wherefore the, the hunters, hunters lodge today? today? We'll saunter to the mill in yonder hollow. Go to the river tavern, I should say. But then it's not a pleasant way. And, and what, what will, will you? you? As goes the crowd, I follow. Come up to Bergdorf. There you'll find good cheer. The finest lasses and the best of beer. And jolly rows and squabbles, trust me. You swaggering fellow. 
is your hide a third time itching to be tried i won't go there your jolly rows disgust me no no i'll turn and go to town again we'll surely find him by those poplars yonder that's no great luck for me tis plain you'll have him when and where you wander his partner in the dance you'll be but what is all your fun to me he's surely not alone to-day he'll be with curly head i heard him say Deuce! How they step the bunks and winches! Come, brother, we must see them to the benches. A strong old beer, a pipe that stings and bites, a girl in Sunday clothes, these three are my delights. Just see those handsome fellows there. It's really shameful, I declare, to follow servant girls when they might have the most genteel society today. To the first student. Not quite so fast. Two others come behind, those, dressed so prettily and neatly, my neighbor's one of them. I find a girl that takes my heart, completely. They go their way with looks demure, but they'll accept us, after all, I'm sure. No, brother, not for me their formal ways. Quick, lest our game escape us in the press. The hand that wields the broom on Saturdays will best on Sundays fondle and caress. He suits me not at all, our new-made burgomaster. Since he's installed, his arrogance grows faster. How has he helped the town, I say? Things worsen. What improvement names he? Obedience more than ever claims he, and more than ever we must pay. Beggar sings good gentlemen and lovely ladies so red of cheek and fine of dress behold how needful here your aid is and see enlighten my distress let me not vainly sing my ditty he's only glad who gives away a holiday that shows your pity shall be for me a harvest day on Sundays, holidays, there's naught I take delight in, like gossiping of war and war's array, when down in Turkey far away the foreign people are a-fighting. One at the window sits with glass and friends, and sees all sorts of ships go down the river gliding, and blesses then as home he wends at night our times of peace abiding. Yes, neighbour, that's my notion too. Why, let them break their heads, let loose their passions, and mix things madly through and through. So, here, we keep our good old fashions. Old woman to the citizen's daughter. Dear me, how fine, so handsome and so young. Who wouldn't lose his heart that met you? Don't be so proud, I'll hold my tongue, and what you'd like I'll undertake to get you. Come, Agatha, I shun the witch's sight. Before folks, lest there be misgiving, tis true she showed me on st andrew's night my future sweetheart just as he were living she showed me mine in crystal clear with several wild young blades a soldier lover i seek him everywhere i pry and peer and yet somehow his face i can't discover castles with lofty ramparts and towers maidens disdainful in beauty's array both shall be ours Bold, Bold is, is the venture, splendid the pay. Lads, let the trumpets for us be suing, calling to pleasure, calling to ruin. Stormy our life is, such is its boon. Maidens and castles capitulate soon. Bold is the venture, splendid the pay, and the soldiers go marching, marching away. Released from ice are brook and river, by the quickening glance of the gracious spring, the colors of hope to the valley cling, and weak old winter himself must shiver, withdrawn to the mountains, a crownless king. Whence ever retreating he sends again impotent showers of sleet that darkle in belts across the green of the plain, but the sun will permit no white to sparkle everywhere form in development moveth he will brighten the world with the tints he loveth and lacking blossoms blue yellow and red he takes these gaudy people instead turn thee about 
and from this height back on the town direct thy sight out of the hollow gloomy gate the motley throngs come forth elate each will the joy of the sunshine hoard to honor the day of the risen lord they feel themselves their resurrection from the low dark room scarce habitable from the bonds of work from trade's restriction from the pressing weight of roof and gable from the narrow crushing streets and alleys from the church's solemn and reverent night all come forth to the cheerful light how lively see the multitude sallies scattering through gardens and fields remote while over the river that broadly dallies dances so many a festive boat and over laden nigh to sinking the last full wherry takes the steam yonder afar from the hill paths blinking their clothes are colours that softly gleam i hear the noise of the village even here is the people's proper heaven here high and low contented see here i am man dare man to be to stroll with you sir doctor flatters tis honour profit unto me but i alone would shun these shallow matters since all that's coarse provokes my enmity this fiddling shouting tin-pin rolling i hate these noises of the throng they rave as satan were their sports controlling and call it mirth and call it song peasants under the linden tree dance and song all for the dance the shepherd dressed in ribbons wreath and gayest vest himself with care arraying around the linden lass and lad already footed it like mad hurrah 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 tarara la the fiddle bow was playing he broke the ranks, no whit afraid, and with his elbow punched a maid who stood the dance surveying. The buxom when she turned and said, Now you I call a stupid head. Hurrah, 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 tarara la. Be decent while you're staying. Then round the circle went their flight, they danced to left, they danced to right, their kirtles all were playing. They first grew red and then grew warm and rested panting arm in arm, hurrah, 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 tarara la, and hips and elbows straying. Now don't be so familiar here, how many a one has fooled his dear, waylaying and betraying. And yet he coaxed her soon aside, and round the linden sounded wide, hurrah, 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 tarara la, and fiddle bow was playing. Sir Doctor, it is good of you that thus you condescend to-day among this crowd of merry folk a high learned man to stray then also take the finest can we fill with fresh wine for your sake i offer it and humbly wish that not alone your thirst is slake that as the drops below its brink so many days of life you drink I take the cup you kindly reach with thanks and health to all and each. The people gather in a circle about him. In truth, tis well and fitly timed that now our day of joy you share, who wheretofore in evil days gave us so much of helping care. Still many a man stands living here, saved by your father's skilful hand, that snatched him from the fever's rage, and stayed the plague in all the land. Then also you, though but a youth, went into every house of pain. Many the corpses carried forth, but you in health came out again no test or trial you evaded a helping god the helper aided health to the man so skilled and tried that for our help he long may abide to him above bow down my friends who teaches help 
and succor sends. He goes on with Wagner. With what a feeling, thou great man, must thou receive the people's honest veneration? How lucky he, whose gifts his station, with such advantages endow. Thou art shown to all the younger generation, each ask and presses near to gaze. The fiddle stops, the dance delays. Thou goest, they stand in rows to see, and all the caps are lifted high. A little more, and they would bend the knee, as if the holy host came by. A few more steps ascend, as far as yonder stone. Here from our wandering we will rest contented. Here, lost in thought, I've lingered oft alone, when foolish fasts and prayers my life tormented. Here, rich in hope and firm in faith, with tears, wrung hands, and sighs, I've striven the end of that far-spreading death, entreating from the Lord of heaven. Now, like contempt, the crowd's applauses seem. Couldst thou but read within mine inmost spirit, how little now I deem that sire or son such praises merit. My father's was a sombre, brooding brain, which through the holy spheres of nature groped and wandered, and honestly, in his own fashion, pondered with labor whimsical and pain, who in his dusky workshop bending, with proved adepts in company, made from his recipes unending, opposing substances agree. There was a lion red, a wooer daring, within the lily's tepid bath espoused, and both tormented then by flame unsparing, by turns in either bridal chamber housed. If then appeared with colors splendid the young queen in her crystal shell, this was the medicine. The patient's woes soon ended, and none demanded who got well. Thus we our hellish boluses compounding, among these vales and hills surrounding, worse than the pestilence have passed. Thousands were done to death from poison of my giving, and I must hear by all the living the shameless murderers praised at last. Why, therefore, yield to such depression? A good man does his honest share in exercising with the strictest care the art bequeathed to his possession. Dost thou thy father honor as a youth? Then may his teaching cheerfully impel thee. Dost thou, as man, increase the stores of truth? Then may thine own son afterwards excel thee. O oh, happy he who still renews the hope from error's deeps to rise forever! That which one does not know one needs to use, and what one knows one uses never. But let us not by such despondence sow the fortune of this hour embitter. Mark how, beneath the evening sunlight's glow, the green embosomed houses glitter. The glow retreats, done is the day of toil, it yonder hastes, new fields of life exploring. Ah, that no wing can lift me from the soil upon its track to follow, follow soaring. Then would I see eternal evening gild the silent world beneath me glowing, on fire each mountain peak, with peace each valley filled, the silver brook to golden rivers flowing. The mountain chain with all its gorges deep would then no more impede my godlike motion, and now before mine eyes expands the ocean with all its bays in shining sleep. Yet finally the weary god is sinking. The new-born impulse fires my mind. I hasten on, his beams eternal drinking, The day before me, and the night behind. Above me heaven unfurled, The floor of waves beneath me, A glorious dream! Though now the glories fade. Alas, the wings that lift the mind, No aid of wings to lift the body can bequeath me, Yet in each soul is born the pleasure of yearning onward, upward, and away. When o'er our heads, lost in the vaulted azure, the lark sends down his flickering lay. When over crags and piny highlands the poising eagle slowly soars, and over plains and lakes and islands the crane sails by to other shores. 
I've had myself at times some odd caprices, but never yet such an impulse felt as this is. One soon fatigues on woods and fields to look, nor would I beg the bird his wing to spare us. How otherwise the mental raptures bear us from page to page, from book to book. Then winter nights take loveliness untold, as warmer life in every limb had crowned you. And when your hands unroll some parchment rare and old, all heaven descends and opens bright around you. One impulse art thou conscious of at best. Oh, never seek to know the other. Two souls, alas, reside within my breast, and each withdraws from and repels its brother. One with tenacious organs holds in love and clinging lust the world in its embraces. The other strongly sweeps this dust above into the high ancestral spaces. If there be airy spirits near, twixt heaven and earth on potent errands fleeing, let them drop down the golden atmosphere, and bear me forth to new and varied being. Yea, if a magic mantle once were mine, to waft me o'er the world at pleasure, I would not for the costliest stores of treasure, not for a monarch's robe, the gift resign. Invoke not thus the well-known throng, which through the firmament diffused is bearing, and danger thousandfold our race to wrong, in every quarter is preparing. Swift from the north the spirit fangs so sharp, sweep down, and with their barbed points will assail you. Then from the east they come, to dry and warp your lungs, till breath and being fail you. If from the desert sendeth them the south, with fire on fire your throbbing forehead crowning, the west leads on a host to cure the drought. Only one meadow, field, and you are drowning. They gladly hearken prompt for injury, gladly obey because they gladly cheat us. From heaven they represent themselves to be, and lisp like angels when the lies they meet us. But let us go. Tis gray and dusky all. The air is cold, the vapors fall. At night one learns his house to prize. Why stand you this with such astonished eyes? What in the twilight can your mind so trouble? Seest thou the black dog coursing there, through corn and stubble? Long since, yet deemed him not important in the least. Inspect him close, for what takes thou the beast? Why, for a poodle who has lost his master, and sense about his track to find. Seest thou the spiral circles, narrowing faster, which he, approaching round us, seems to wind? A streaming trail of fire, if I see rightly, follows his path of mystery. It may be your eyes deceive you slightly, not but a plain black poodle do I see. It seems to me that, with enchanted cunning, he snares our feet some future chain to bind. I see him timidly, in doubt around us running, since in his master's stead two strangers doth he find. The circle narrows. He is near. A dog thou seest, and not a phantom here. Behold him stop, upon his belly crawl, his tail set wagging, canine habits all. Come, follow us. Come here, at least. Tis the absurdest, drollest beast. Stand still, and you will see him wait. Address him, and he gambles straight. If something's lost, he'll quickly bring it. Your cane, if in the stream, you fling it. No doubt you're right. No trace of mind, I own, is in the beast. I see but drill alone. The dog, when he's well educated, is by the wisest tolerated. Yes, he deserves your favor thoroughly. The clever scholar of the students he... They pass in the city gate. 3. The Study Faust, entering with the poodle. Behind me, field and meadows sleeping, I leave in deep prophetic night, Within whose dread and holy keeping The better soul awakes to light. The wild desires no longer win us, The deeds of passion cease to chain, 
The love of man revives within us. The love of God revives again. Be still, thou poodle. Make not such racket and riot. Why at the threshold wilt snuffing be? Behind the stove repose thee in quiet. My softest cushion I give to thee. As thou up yonder, with running and leaping, Amused us hast on the mountain's crest, So now I take thee into my keeping, A welcome, but also a silent guest. Ah, when within our narrow chamber The lamp with friendly luster glows, Flames in the breast each faded ember, And in the heart itself that knows, Then hope again lends sweet assistance, and reason then resumes her speech. One yearns the rivers of existence, the very fonts of life to reach. Snarl not, poodle, to the sound that rises, the sacred tones that my soul embrace. This bestial noise is out of place. We are used to see that man despises what he never comprehends, and the good and the beautiful villapens, finding them often hard to measure. Will the dog, like man, snarl his displeasure? But, ah, I feel, though will thereto be stronger, Contentment flows from out my breast no longer. Why must the stream so soon run dry and fail us, And burning thirst again assail us? Therein I've borne so much probation, And yet this want may be supplied us, we call the supernatural to guide us. We pine and thirst for revelation, which nowhere worthier is, more nobly sent, than here, in our New Testament. I feel impelled its meaning to determine, with honest purpose once for all, the hallowed original to change to my beloved German. He opens a volume and commences. Tis written, In the beginning was the word, here I am balked. Who now can help afford? The word, impossible so high to rate it, and otherwise I must translate it. If by the spirit I am truly taught, then thus, in the beginning, was the thought. This first line let me weigh completely, lest my impatient pen proceed too fleetly. Is it the thought which works, creates indeed, in the beginning was the power I read. Yet as I write a warning is suggested, That I the sense may not have fairly tested. The spirit aids me, now I see the light. In the beginning was the act I write. If I must share my chamber with thee, poodle, Stop that howling, prithee. Cease to bark and bellow. Such a noisy, disturbing fellow I'll no longer suffer near me. One of us, dost hear me, must leave, I fear me. No longer guest right I bestow. The door is open, art free to go. But what do I see in the creature? Is that in the course of nature? Is it actual fact, or fancies, shows? How long and broad my poodle grows! He rises mightily, a canine form that cannot be. What a spectre I've harboured thus! He resembles a hippopotamus with fiery eyes, teeth terrible to see. Oh, now am I sure of thee, for all of thy half-hellish brood the key of Solomon is good. Spirits in the Corridor Someone within is caught, stay without, follow him not, like the fox in a snare, quick the old, the old hellling stare. Take heed, look about, back and forth, hover under and over, and will whip himself out. If your aid avail him, let it not fail him, for he without measure has wrought for our pleasure. First, to encounter the beast, the words of the form be addressed. Salamander, shine glorious! Wave undine as bidden. Sylph, be thou hidden. Gnome, be laborious. Who knows not their sense, these elements, Their properties and power not seize, No mastery he inherits over the spirits. Vanish in flaming ether, salamander. Flow foamingly together, undine. 
shine in meteor sheen, sylph. Bring help to hearth and shelf. Incubus, incubus, step forward and finish thus. Of the four no feature lurks in the creature. Quiet he lies and grins disdain. Not yet, it seems, have I given him pain. Now to undisguise thee, hear me exercise thee. Art thou, my gay one, hell's fugitive stray one? The sign witness now before which they bow, the cohorts of hell. With hair all bristling it begins to swell. Base being, hearest thou? Knowest and fearest thou the one, unoriginate, named inexpressibly, through all heaven impermeate, pierced irredressibly? Behind the stove still banned, see it an elephant expand. It fills the space entire, mist-like melting ever faster. Tis enough, ascend no higher. Lay thyself at the feet of the master. Thou seest not vain the threats I bring thee. With holy fire I'll scorch and sting thee. Wait not to know the threefold dazzling glow. Wait not to know the strongest art within my hands. Mephistopheles, while the vapour is dissipating, steps forth from behind the stove, in the costume of a travelling scholar. Why such a noise? What are my lord's commands? This was the poodle's real core. A travelling scholar, then. The Cossus is diverting. The learned gentleman I bow before, you have made me roundly sweat. That is certain. What is thy name? Equation small, it seems, for one whose mind the world so much despises, who, scorning all external glimpses, the depths of being only prizes. With all you gentlemen, the names attest whereby the nature usually is expressed. Clearly the latter it implies in names like Beelzebub, destroyer, father of lies. Who art thou, then? Part of that power not understood, Which always wills the bad, And always walks the good. What hidden sense in this enigma lies? I am the spirit that denies, And justly so, For all things from the void called forth Deserve to be destroyed. It are better than were not created, does all which you as seen have rated destruction ought it evil blend that is my proper element thou namest thyself apart yet showest complete to me the modest truth i speak to thee if man that microcosmic fool can see himself a whole so frequently Part of the part am I, once all, in primal night. Part of the darkness which brought forth the light. The half delight which now disputes the space. And claims of mother night her ancient place. And yet the struggle fails, since light, however it weaves, Still fettered unto bodies cleaves. It flows from bodies, bodies beautifies. By bodies is its course impeded, and so but little time is needed. I hope ere, as the bodies die, it dies. I see the plan thou art pursuing. Thou canst not compass general ruin, and hast on smaller scale begun. And truly it is not much when all is done. That which to not is in resistance set. The something of this clumsy world has yet, which all that I have undertaken, not been by me disturbed or shaken, from earthquake tamp based wave volcanoes brand, back into quite subtle sea and land, and the damned stuff, the bestial human brood. What use in having that to play with? How many have I made away with? and ever circulates a newer, fresher blood. It makes me furious such things beholding, from water, art, and air unfolding. A thousand germs break forth and grow, 
in dry and wet and warm and chilly and had i not the flame reserved why really there is nothing special of my own to show so to the actively eternal creative force in cold disdain you now oppose the fist infernal whose wicked clench is all in vain <laughs> some other labour seek thou rather queer son of chaos to begin well we will consider thou canst gather my views when next i venture in might i perhaps depart at present why thou shouldst ask i don't perceive though our acquaintance is so recent for further visits thou hast leave the window's here the door is yonder a chimney also you behold i must confess that thought i may not wander my steps by one slight obstacle controlled the wizard's foot that on your threshold made is the pentagram prohibits thee why tell me now thou son of hades if that prevents how camest thou in to me could such a spirit be so cheated inspect the thing the drawing is not completed the outer angle you may see is open left the lines don't fit it well chance this time has fairly hid it and thus thou art prisoner to me it seems the business has succeeded the puddle not remarked as after thee he speeded but other respects now obtain the devil can't get out again try then the open window pane for devils and for spectres this is law where they have entered in there also they withdraw the first is free to us we are governed by the second in hell itself then laws are reckoned that's well so might a compact be made with you gentlemen and binding surely all that is promised shall delight thee purely no skinflint bargain shalt thou see but this is not of swift conclusion we will talk about the matter soon and now i do entreat this boon leave to withdraw from my intrusion one moment more i ask thee to remain some pleasant news at least to tell me release me now i soon shall come again then thou at will mayst question and compel me i have not snares around thee cast thyself hast led thyself into the meshes who traps the devil hold him fast not soon a second time he'll catch a prey so precious and to please thee also i am content to stay and serve thee in a social station but stipulating that i may with arts of mine afford thee recreation thereto i willingly agree if the diversion pleasant be my friend thou wilt win past all pretences more in this hour to soothe thy senses than in the year's monotony that which the dainty spirits seeing thee the lovely pictures they shall bring thee are more than magic's empty show thy scent will be to bliss invited thy palate than with taste delighted thy nerves of touch ecstatic glow all unprepared the charm i spin we are here together so begin vanish ye darking arches above him loveliest weather born of blue ether break from the sky oh that the darkening clouds had departed starlight is sparkling tranquilly hearted suns are on high heaven's own children in beauty bewildering waveringly bending past as they hover longing unending follows them over they with their glowing garments outflowing cover in going landscape and bower where in seclusion lovers are plighted lost in illusion bower on bower 
tendrils unblighted, lo, in a shower of grapes that o'er cluster gush into must, or flow into rivers of foaming and gushing wine that is dashing gems as it boundeth down the high places and spreading surroundeth with crystalline spaces and happy embraces. Blossoming forelands, emerald shorelands, than the winged races drink and fly onward, fly ever sunward to the enticing islands that flatter, dipping and rising light on the water, hark the inspiring sound of their choiring, see the entrancing whirl of their dancing, all in the air are freer and fairer, some of them scaling boldly the highlands, others are sailing, circling the islands, others are flying lifeward, all hying, all for the distant star of existent rapture and love. He sleeps. And of your face, your airy number have sung him truly into slumber. For this performance I your debtor prove. Not yet art thou the man to catch the find and hold him. With fairest images of dreams enfold him, plunge him into seas of sweet untruth. Yet for the threshold's magic which controlled him, the devil needs a rat's quick tooth. I use no lengthened invocation. Here rustles one that soon will work my liberation. The lord of rats and eke of mice, of flies and bedbugs, frogs and lice, summons thee hither to the door sill, to gnaw it where with just a morsel of oil he paints the spot for thee. There comes thou, hopping on to me, to work at once the point which made me craven is forward on the ledge and graven. Another bite makes free the door. So dream thy dreams, O Faust, until we meet once more. Faust, awaking. Am I again so foully cheated? Remains there naught of lofty spirit sway, but that a dream the devil counterfeited, and that a poodle ran away? End of scene three. End of section.